and every single Eid of Fitr al Mubarak to order. today to attend a forum on peace building and good governance and this is in celebration of Eidil Fitir al-Mubarak of our Muslim brothers and sisters. The theme today is challenges for chance to federal system of government. So let's check it out. Story. Over a year ago, itong PDP laban, nagtayo po sila ng study group to start writing a new constitution. Naglabas po kami ng libro, The Quest for a Federal Philippines version 1.0. Yung pong ginawa namin sa Ligang Batas, binigyan na po namin sa consultative committee na binuo ng Pangulo. Right now, there's 22 members. Ito po ay isang naging batayan nila sa pagsulat nila ng kasalukuyang draft constitution. Inaasahan po natin matatapos sila by July 9. Pagkatapos ibibigay po kay Presidente, baka makapag-desisyon na si Presidente. He can talk about it during his sona on July 23. Pagkatapos po ng approval ni Presidente sa version na gagawin niya, no? siyempre, baka kung ano pa mga pagbabago inalagay niya sa, sa sinulat ng Consultative Committee, ipapadala na po yun sa Kongreso. Ngayon, dito pa sa Kongreso, talaga, dyan talaga susulatin ang bagong saligang batas. Because only they can write a new constitution or amend it in a major way. Inaasahan po natin matatapos sila no later than end of this year para makapaghabol po tayo ng plebisito no later than kasabay ng May elections next year. Alam na po natin na pag-iwanan na ang Pilipinas. Other Asian countries have progressed steadily. We have been left behind one by one. Sa ngayon po, uy, ayon sa Global Finance, number 63 na po tayo. Ang ranking, uh, dito po sa ASEAN. We are still poor sa buong Asia. The Philippines is the only country that has not cut its poverty by one half in the last, since 1990, from 1990 to 2015, in the last 25 years. Tingnan naman po natin sa infrastructure. Ito po ay ginawa ng World Economic Forum, yung nag-meet every year sa Davos. Ito po ang rankings as of 2015. Nandito po yung anim na malalaking bansa ng ASEAN. Pilipinas, Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore. Nandito po ay iba-ibang klaseng infrastructure, roads, railroads, ports, 
air, infra, electricity, mobile, fixed telecom, at saka yung overall. Yung pong pinaka-advance, pinaka yung pong nasa ibaba. So number four, no surprise, Singapore. Yung pong gold. Yung pong pinaka-kulelat, yung pong nasa itaas, nasa green, kulay gray. Sino po ito? Bansang Pilipinas. Kahit ano pong klase infrastructure, at lalong nasa kabuuan, tayo po ang kulelat sa lahat. Siguro yung pong dahilan kung bakit nga nagtayo ng field, field, field program na Pangulo at tinuloy na rin yung train para pondohan ang field, field, field niya. Ano po ang dahilan kung bakit tayo napag-iwanan? Nakikita naman po natin, very simple, tingnan po natin ang real GDP, gross domestic product, on a regional basis per capita in million pesos. Makikita po natin, <coughs> ito pong NCR. Ito pong kanilang GRDP from 2009 to 2014. Nandito pong Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. In other words, para po umasenso o lumago ang buong GDP ng Pilipinas, hindi po problema yung NCR. Kailangan na paluguin yung GDP sa tatlong ibang region. Paano po natin gagawin yan? Yan po ang ating next slide. What is federalism? Next. As many of you know, it is a form of government where sovereignty is shared between a central authority, the federal government, and states or regions. Ang tawag po natin na dito ay federated regions. We'll get to that in a while. National government focuses on national interests like foreign relations, national security, monetary policy, central bank. The states or regions are responsible for delivering public goods and social services as well as economic development sa grassroots. Next. Ito ko ang latest decision, ang latest recommendation ng Consultative Committee na ihaharap sa Pangulo, hopefully within the month of July, is to have initially 18 federated regions or states. Bale, sumusunod po sa kasalukuyan mga administrative regions. Pero, dagdag naman nila, the regions may consolidate into fewer number over time. Pwede po magbuklod-buklod pa ang mga regions para mas kumote po ang kabuuan o ang kalahatan. Andyan po ang ano, Northern Luzon, Central Luzon, Bicol, Southern Tagalog, Simbisayas, Minparong, etc. etc. Actually, itong bilang na ito ay 13 lang eh. Ito pong ginawa namin sa study group, 13 lang. Nagsumulat ng libro. Pag natin po sa condom, naging 18. So itong Mindanao, mga dinagdagan niya ito ng mga division, Ang Western Visayas ay binukod ang Negros kasi nandiyan po si Commissioner Art Aguilar na noon pa man eh, yun ang kanyang gusto mangyari, separate ang Negros and then etc. sa etc. sa taas yung Cordillera para iiwan ang hiwala yung, yung Cordillera Administrative Region. Na importante po, whatever the initial number is, pwede pa po magsama-sama yun over time. So we will let this develop naturally. Next. Special mention po tayo sa Bangsamoro. The Bangsamoro is the only region that will be allowed to have its own regional constitution in the form of the Bangsamoro Basic Law. No other federated region will have that privilege. Ano po ang strategy natin para mailusot po ang Bangsamoro in a form na, na nasa kagustuhan po ng karamihan na nasa Bangsamoro? Una-una, Hindi po pwede iwasan na the Bangsamoro has to conform, the bill has to conform to the current constitution. Because that is what we have. Kaya nga po yung version na lumalabas ngayon mula sa Senado, eh may mga limitasyon at hindi pa po masaya ang ating mga kapatid sa Bangsamoro. Pero ipapasamo na natin yan and then kapag natuloy po ang pagtayo ng federal system at nagbago ng ating saligang patas at mas maluwag na sa issue ng pagbibigay ng autonomiya sa mga region, pwede na pong gumawa ng dagdag na batas ang Bangsamoro Parliament. 
para lalo pong palakasin ang BBL. So medyo gumagawa po tayo ng konting judo dyan, konting magic. It's the best strategy to get the Bank Samoro law in place immediately. Medyo limitado sa ngayon. While we can expand it later kapag mas maluwag na po sa ilalim ng bagong saligang batas. Yung po ang strategy hinihingan ng suporta ng ang ating gobyerno. Ano po ang example ng federal powers? National defense, foreign policy, currency banking and monetary policy, customs immigration, international trade. Next. Ano po ang mga powers ng mga regional governments? Marami po yan. Yun po actually pinakamarami. Well, yun ang pangalawang pinakamarami. Regional planning, general supervision of local governments, housing, water supply, waste management, Education, infrastructure, ibig po sabihin nito yung pagtayo ng mga eskwela at pagpapasweldo sa mga teacher at pagpapatakbo ng mga paaralan. Next. Concurrent or shared powers. Ito po ang mga powers na hinahatid o in-exercise ng regional level and lower pero ang standards and policies na gagaling sa itaas. Law and order, administration of justice, yung pong nilalaman o curriculum ng ating education at all levels, energy, social security, social welfare, etc., etc. Ito po ang pinakamarami. Kasi dito po nakikita pa yung coordination between national and regional governments. National, policy setting and standards and planning, regional and lower, actual implementation, coordination and more. Ano at advantages na federal idea? Okay, bilis na lang po natin. Empowerment, autonomy, I want to get to the institutional reforms, no? Kasi, nakayin na minuto na ba ako? Okay, ten minutes na ako. Ha? Ha? Take my time? Oh, sige. Take my time. Kasi baka magalit sa akin si Sek Rafi. Baka masermo na nako. Empowerment. Ang ibig po sabihin nito, autonomy, ang prinsipyo na pinag-usapan natin kanina, Our citizens will become more involved in government at the local level. Dahil dyan, we are hoping they will be more willing to pay the taxes. Okay, kasi problema ngayon palagi yung tax evasion. Number two, better decision making yung po sinabi ko na ng subsidiarity. The closer you make your decision to the people, the better your decisions are. Kasi mas malapit po kayo sa kanilang realidad, mas naintindihan nyo, mas nababantayan ninyo. Next, accountability. Dahil na po sa subsidiarity, mayiging mas accountable na po ang ating mga government officials sa kanila mga pinaglilingkuran. Hopefully, this means over time, personality-based politics will be replaced by platform and performance. Next, healthy competition. Sa akin po, importante ito. No? Regions will have to compete with each other to attract foreign and domestic trade, investment, and credit. Sa pamamagitan po ng competition na ito, lilitaw po ano po ang magaganda mga policy at patakaran. Mas maganda po ba magkaroon ng minimum wage o walang minimum wage? Mas maganda po ba magkaroon ng restrictions sa foreign investment o wala? Mas maganda po ba magkaroon ng isang land use code para sa bumbayan o iba-ibang land use code? Diyan po natin malalaman po ano ang tamang policy. Kasi bibigyan po ng kalayaan ng mga regions to implement what is best for them. Next. Diversity and mediunity. Yung nga po, lalo na para sa, ano, sa ating mga kapatid sa Bangsamoro and other indigenous peoples will be addressed and protected. Lastly, para sa ating matigang Metro Manila, the congested capital region, sapagkat hindi na po, inaasan po natin na hindi na po mag pupunta sa Metro Manila ang ating mga kababayan mula sa probinsya sapagkat kung nasan po sila ngayon magkakaroon po ng mga dagdag na pagkakataon at hanap buhay. Draft being put together by the Consultative Committee, the President and VP are elected for up to two four-year terms consecutive. They have to be elected as a team. Wala na pong ticket splitting para yun sa Amerika. Tandem na po sila. The current president will be explicitly banned from running again, or rather from extending beyond 2022. Kasi po, marami po maangal dyan eh. Marami naghihinala. But this is not gonna happen. Next. 
sa Kongreso po, sa Senado, na malaking pagbabago, they will have the same powers, pero malaking pagbabago, there will only be two senators per region, they'll be they'll elected by region, so if you have 18 regions, you will have 36 senators elected by region. Hopefully po, bababa ng, bababa ng kailangan gastusin para manalo sa Senado, at pas, pag mas mababa na po ang ano, ang investment, hopefully mas mababa na po ang kanilang hinahabol na ROI. Huwag naman po sa akin. Itigil na po natin yan. Sa House, 400 members as opposed to the current 200, well, almost 300. Okay? 60% will be elected by district. Katulad ng kasalukuyan sistema, mga 230 galing po sa mga districts. No? Yung party listers, lahat tatanggalin. Ang sistema ngayon, papalitan ng tinatawag na proportional representation at magiging 160 ang total for an, uh, congressman elected under proportional representation. I'll get to that in the next slide. Okay, in both houses, four-year term, maximum of two consecutive terms. Katulad din ng Pangulo. Next. Ito po, itong PR sa lower house. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? In the house elections, a voter votes twice for his district congressman and for a political party. At least 60% of the entire house will come from single seat districts. Katulad ng kasalukuyang practice. The balance for the 40% will be comprised of nominees of political parties based on a closed list. Na nakabanggit talaga po pangalan nila. Nandyan pa rin po ang Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court now has more power to limit the cases that it hears. Ang ibig sabihin po nun, ang karamihan ng kaso na iapela sa Supreme Court, aabot lang po sa, sa level ng regional appellate courts na bubuoyin ng Supreme Court. There will be other high courts, three other high courts. A new constitutional court that will rule on... Sino mga abogado? Sino abogado ba rito? Lawyers? Lawyers, okay. You will be interested in this. This is your new working environment. A new constitutional court will rule on constitutional issues including the constitutionality of proposed new bills. Ginagawa pa lang pa, gina, sinusulat pa lang yung batas sa Kongreso. Maari humingi ng opinion ang Kongreso mula sa Constitutional Court kung constitutional nga ba, nga ba yung bagong batas na ito. Para wala na po, mababawasan po down the road yung mga sinachallenge sa constitutionality ng batas na kasi sa simula pa lang, gumawa na po ng ruling ang Constitutional Court. This is practiced in many European legal systems, judicial systems. Next. There will be an administrative high court to rule on issues of government administration, including disputes among the regions. And there will be an electoral high, electoral high court to rule on electoral cases na napakarami po palagi sa ating bayan. Next. Ito po, this is a new body. It will be a very powerful body. Okay. Federal Intergovernmental Commission or FIGC. Ano po may trabaho ng FIGC na ito? Number one, dalawa lang po ang mahalagang trabaho nito. Number one is to administer the Revenue Equalization Fund. Yung po itatayong pondo para po yung mga mas mayayaman na region tutulong sa mga mas mahihirap. It will be administered through this fund that will be run by FIGC. The other big job for FIGC, they will have quasi-judicial powers to rule on interregional disputes which can also be appealed to the administrative high court na nabanggit ko kanina. It will be composed of 11 members appointed by the President, Tatlo, appointed by Congress, Apat, and a new Council of Regional Governors. Apat ang i-appoint nila. This council will comprise the 18 governors of the federated regions. Ito mga miyembro ng FIGC na to will be required to be experts in constitutional law, public administration and finance, and or local government. Susulatin po yun sa saling yung batas ang kanilang qualification. Next. So makita po natin, there are many institutions being set up. 
to strengthen the federal system. Number one, the senators will be elected by region. Number two, there will be a council of regional governors. Number two, there will be number three, there will be the federal intergovernmental commission. Number four, the administrative high court will rule on appeals by the uh, FIGC. And number five, there will be a revenue equalization fund to institutionalize fiscal revenue sharing or maybe lending among the different regions. Okay, there will be a self-executory ban on political dynasties within the second degree of consanguinity. Ang sakop yata po nun is uh, siblings, children, and parents. Okay. Party switching will be banned. You cannot change your party affiliation during your term of office or within one year preceding or following an election. Otherwise, you lose your seat. You will be banned from running again. Bibigyan na po ng pondo ng public funds yung mga political parties based on how they perform in the election. That means they will become subject to audit by COA. Sa wakas, mababantayan po natin kung saan kumukuha ng pera mga pati na ito, kung sino po ang kanila mga pinagkakautangan ng loob, baka meron dyan drug lord, baka meron dyan smuggler. Malalaman na po natin at least based on the financial records ng political parties. Next. Ito po ang sinulat ko sa si libro. Yung pagtaas o yung pagbawi na mga economic restrictions in the new constitution. We, will, uh, we propose to remove restrictions on foreign ownership in the following areas. Public utilities, mass media, advertising. Gusto rin po sana namin isama yung lupa pero sa akin ni Presidente Duterte. Then gusto ko may restrictions dyan. So okay, siyempre, go along kami. In other words, it is now up to Congress to determine economic policy by issuing laws in the following areas, natural resources, public utilities, labor, and grant reform, etc. Uh, my call, my idol, Secretary Rabbi Alunan.